Hi, and welcome to Talk Word. I'm Marty Dundix, the uh, editor-in-chief of Weekly Humorous Magazine, and I'm here today with James Fulton. Whoop, whoop. James is a comedy writer, comedy performer, mm-hmm. artist, so far so good, and uh, just an all-around super-duper guy. Uh, thank you. So thanks for coming on the show, James of Fulton. Of course. This is Thanks Talk for having Word. me. No problem. Um, you, I met you because you were a contributing writer for Weekly Humors. Yes. Um, you're a writer for New Yorker. Yes. McSweeney's. Mm-hmm. American Bystander. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Um, what else is those in Those are kind of the big hits. I, uh, I perform at the... At are the there UCB. smaller ones that are smaller hits? Yeah. There's a few like one-off places that I sent like one piece to and then they like folded or it was like a blog and it was dumb or like the editor was a dick <laughs> and so I didn't write back. Like there's a number of places. Are there a lot of bad editors in the, in the comedy publishing literary world? <sighs> I would say no, but I think I've probably met all of the bad ones. I think for the most part, the people that are the people that stick around are, are good. But there have been a couple people. Like there was one guy I sent a piece to, and he was like, "This is great. We'll take it. We're running it next week." And I was like, "Okay, awesome." Uh, and then he, the day before he was running it, he sent me his uh, punch up, was what he called it. But he had rewritten the whole thing. He literally kept my headline, deleted the thing, and then was going to run it under my name with like his rewrite, which was worse and i was like bullshit it was crazy and i wrote back and i was like this isn't what i wrote and he was like i know i took a pass at it and i was like this isn't a pass right like you liked my headline and we're like i think i can do this well i mean like i you know that's a bad as a comedy i mean as a comedy editor i and maybe it's because i'm just lazy i take the talent which is you or anybody that sends really good content yeah and i say this is great i want to run this i have I have no interest in hmm. taking someone's comedy and changing it and yeah. then publishing it. Right. Like I, I don't I think that's that's a lot more work. I don't want to do that. It's a ton more work. I would yeah. rather just get something that I like, uh accept it and publish it. I don't take stuff that I don't like and then try to change it. Yeah. Why would I do that? It was I just, crazy. Boom. Like the reaction yeah. that I get to a writer when something is good is so fast. Oh, yeah. Like it's not like I have to ponder. No. You, you just know it's when up or something's down. Fun. Yeah, it's up or down. Yeah, it's up or down. Yeah. Exactly. Is that like old Roman times when we're uh, yeah, no, we yeah, for, for those of you who are listening and not watching <laughs> through the window, uh, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down. Are we going to kill them or let them You're live? You're going to kill the peace. Yeah. Are you yeah. going to let it live? I don't know. Yeah. You're a harsh Roman emperor. That's, you know, things have gotten a little bit more civilized, but ultimately, <laughs> still kind of mean. Um, but yeah, I've, 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 hit, I've hit some bad editors. It's been... Uh, but yeah, so there's there's some smaller hits on on my on my old website. That you and can... you are um, you're how old are you? I'm turning thirty this year. It's my hey, congratulations. Uh, when's the um, Doble Quinceanera? When's the birthday? December eighteenth. December eighteenth. Yep, one I'm, week before Christmas. I'm December seventh. <gasps> We're sad. Uh huh. What does that mean? Uh, it means that we get uh, combined birthday gifts for yes. uh, like Christmas and uh, the Sagittarius yeah. is cross to bear. Yeah, which in December is the second most famous cross bearer that was born that month. Oh yeah, there was another guy. There was another guy. I heard about him. Yeah, he's sort he's of famous. Screwing up my gifts. Oh, my God. Um, but yeah, no December. I love the winter, so it's it's nice. You it's going to be a disastrous winter here. Really? I, think. I don't. No, it just got. It went from like uh, it felt like eighty degrees and humid this morning, and now it's like fifty degrees. I know. So I think it's gonna. I think we're gonna skip fall, and it's just gonna be a blizzard. Oh god! And then we're gonna be frozen until April, and then it's gonna thaw, and then you immediately know, thaw. It's gonna go right to ninety, and then the dinosaurs are gonna come back, and <laughs> then it's gonna be terrible. The world's gonna. I mean, like already. Look, Trump's been president for how many months? Not even a year. And we've had a thousand different horrible things happen in this oh, country. God, I know. And right now it's on fire, or it's uh, getting destroyed by a hurricane, or it's, you know, uh, racial tensions, or white supremacy rising up out of nowhere. Like, it's we're at the point now, I feel like at the, par- at the later part of Ghostbusters, after the ghosts have escaped oh, yeah. um, from the firehouse, and they're mm-hmm. shooting out of the top of it. I feel like that's where we are. Like right they're now. still shooting out. And yeah, we're like, yeah. When are they going to stop shooting yeah, out? Like, and then we can start taking care of them. Right. Like Walter Peck just shut down the containment unit. <laughs> right. It blew up. 
Bill Murray said, you know, this guy's a dick or whatever. And then the whole place blew up and then the whole New York City got uh, destroyed. We're like there. I feel like that's where we are. <sighs> yeah. We still don't stuff. know how many ghosts are out there that we need to like start handling. Yeah. Like, like we like, got to wait to get we're the getting full in, count of ghosts. We're getting, we're going to get into an Uber. All of a sudden the Uber driver's a ghost. And <sighs> it's like, <laughs> that's, that's your millennial update too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slimer's an Uber driver. <laughs> For the millennials out there, yeah, we're gonna update this movie so it it is relatable to you. But oh, yeah. now you can you can summon the ghost with an app, and it makes so much more sense. And nobody understands how much work it used to be to get a ghost. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm on the verge of being crotchety. Yeah, you're old. I'm old. At this point, at this you're point, done. I'm basically dead. You're done. Ugh. No one's interested in talking to you. Oh, jeez, I know. They're like, tell me about it. Oh, you're 17. Oh, well, you know, what are your opinions on comedy and uh, <laughs> yeah. acting? And uh, Oh, do you have any uh, scripts you want us to read? You're done. Yeah. We're I, done. I sh- if, I, if I haven't already made it, the only thing that people want to hear from me is... Baby, when's the funeral? Yeah, you're done. Can I get an invite to the funeral? So you're um you're very I mean other than writing a bunch of places, you're also very active in the comedy scene mm-hmm. in New York City. Mm-hmm. Are you, you're like a UCB performer. Yeah, I I do improv at the UCB, which is um And do you have a troupe? Yeah, so I'm on what's called Herald Night, which is Herald Night's very popular. Yeah, very popular. Um and yeah, it's uh I'm on a team called Moose and there's 8 of us and Moose. We, yeah. Straight I think ahead. I saw you promote that on the uh, Facebook. I did. Yeah. You're so. I mean, that's the thing I, I was admiring about you. Promote interesting things that you're doing in comedy all the time. I try you're, to. Yeah. How do you have that much energy? I uh, feel old and tired. Uh, I mean, and I I'm running like a know. magazine, and people are sitting and stuff, <laughs> and I'm doing podcasts, and, and I feel like I can't uh, possibly do any more. And you're doing like a thousand things a day. I drink and, a nightmarish amount of coffee. Yeah. Uh, and I. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know. I, I try to I try to wake up and hit the ground running every morning. What time do you wake up? I usually, I set my alarm for 7.15, and I'm usually out of bed by 7.30. That's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, and I try to like get to my desk and like get writing by then. And you work from home. Yeah, yeah. Which Who are your clients tough. when you're not doing the comedy stuff, writing for magazines and stuff? Are you doing like advertising writing? I do some advertising writing, yeah, okay. which is like... Copywriting? Pretty much, yeah. I've been doing a lot of... Uh, like scripts for Facebook videos, so like of like forty. 40- oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's like for brands, kind of. Yeah. So I there's like. Did a you couple see that people... Dove soap disaster? Yes. Wasn't yeah. that terrible? What if I said that was me? I would love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I thought it'd be a fine idea to have a dark skinned woman uh, change into a white skinned woman I mean, to show how clean she would get. The like, stuff about that is <laughs> like, like, are you kidding me? That's also literal. That's like literally. What? Do, how Dove soap used to be marketed? It. I, I saw like when, famously when you racist. Saw it online, they were like, "Uh, do you remember when you did this?" And they showed yeah. something from like 1920. Yeah. And like holy shit! Like this was really Check racist. Check your archives. Yeah, they're like this was like you know basically blackface Ugh, to wash wash off. Yeah, the, basically wash off the race uh, to make it super ivory white, and it was. It was just like horrible, and to see the like 1920s or whatever the cartoons, and then see it next to something that happened like last week. Yeah, you're like, we've come zero nowhere. <laughs> it's gone from gone. an illustration and like curly Q fonts to like Helvetica and a GIF. And the thing that always gets me about that is there's not somebody. There wasn't somebody in that entire chain. Like you think of like the process that it yeah. Took how for many that people get, saw this? And nobody was like. Or, or at produ- least there's yeah. production people, there's actors, yeah. there's makeup, yeah. there's lights, there's camera, there's editing. Then it goes there's to the everything. social media team. It's like, like no one said anything. Like because the, the second you saw it, you're like, this was terrible. Oh yeah, it took two seconds to realize that this was a horrible idea. And and not I, and the thing that's even more dispiriting is that surely somebody was like, hey, maybe we don't give call, this a second look. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, but seriously. But seriously, and don't call me seriously, because I'm a silly guy. But, like, nobody, like, somebody was surely like, this doesn't pass the smell test. Right. And someone else was like, you're dumb, I'm smart, it's going out. Yeah. Which is, like, I assume Mr. Dove Soap, who stamps everything. Anyway. Yikes. So you're doing copywriting. Doing copywriting. Obviously not Doing Dove. improv. Not doing Dove. Uh, 
Yeah, I did. I did copywriting a, a one time for Cascade. Interesting. Wait, yeah. wait. What's Cascade? Cascade is a that's well, a soap too. You right? live in New York City, so you don't have a dishwasher. Mm-hmm. I assume. No, it's all by hand. Right, it keeps my hands soft. Um, very good. <laughs> Uh, but Cascade is, is like a pellet that you'd put, or it, it's a powder that you'd put in gotcha, the dishwasher gotcha, and it washes gotcha. your uh, dishes. Uh, but I had to do uh, social media copywriting for Cascade. And uh, it was fun, uh, but then Cascade hated everything that I wrote. Really? Yeah. Talk about tough editors. I thought it was funny. It was like, um, I can't remember the idea for it. Basically, the idea was, I hate unloading a dishwasher. Mm-hmm. I'll load a dishwasher and I'll run a dishwasher, but I I would rather hand wash all the dishes than to have to bend over and unload a dishwasher. Yeah, and it was like the idea was like you were a you were like a dishwasher. I don't know, horrible person. It was it was, I it was such a bad copywriting. I can't even remember <laughs> what it was, but it was the hook was like you you were like a you know dishwasher like. Degenerate? Degenerate? It was basically degenerate? De- basically that, but it was like the person that didn't want to unload the dishwasher. Oh, Probably the husband. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I kind of made it like a gender thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they were like, oh, that's great. And then like they were like, yeah, the client hates it. Oh, God. And they hate you. And I was like, I guess I'll just pay me Ugh. my kill fee and I'll leave. That's the other thing, too, is like every experience that I had, people always seem so scared. Like every... like. Everything. Because of Dove Soap. Well, but, it, but that's the thing is, like, why is Dove Soap the one? Like, I've pitched, I'm trying to think, I did some stuff for, like, a shirt company. I pitched some idea, and they were like, that's a little ideas. too spicy. I pitched a ton of ideas that weren't going to ruin their company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, that's the thing. It's like, out of all the ideas that somebody said no to me for, none of them were like, what if the soap changes a woman's race? <laughs> like, like that, like, out of every shitty idea I've had, they've never been that shitty. Right. And the reason cited is always, like, some sort of skittishness on the part of the client. Yeah. I just, I think I use Dove Soap, too. I, just, I should probably switch it up. Yeah. Anyway. You got to use some uh, Irish Spring. Yes. Those dirty Irish. Yeah, they <laughs> keep you clean. <laughs> yeah, the Irish can't, they can't be racist. <laughs> that stuff smells weird, though. I had a roommate who used that stuff. It smells for days. For days. It's like a perfume. Mm -hmm. Like you could smell Irish Spring, even if the soap's not in the room anymore. If someone had used Irish Spring, it's just, it coats the walls. I had a, this was in college and my roommate had left a bar on, I think like a heater. And it like, I think it melted. (laughs) Like it melted in the sun and from the heat. Which like, I didn't know that soap could do that. I guess, I guess it could. But anyway, it got into the heater. So our apartment smelled like, or our, our room, our dorm room smelled like, Irish Spring. Irish Spring forever. I mean, as far as I know, it still is. So what kind of clients do you do, you do copywriting? Uh, I've done a lot of stuff for this one shirt company. So I... Like Busted Tees? I'm not sure that I'm allowed to say. It's okay. But you it is Busted to. Tees. Yeah. <laughs> and those tees are busted as hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, actually, that would be a tough one to sell. Of like, do you want like a, an off-color 9-11 joke and a like female body inspector shirt on the same site? Maybe. These shirts are busted. <laughs> uh, no, it's like a nice like menswear kind of shirt thing. That's and the nice. whole thing is like, you know, you're like commuting and you're like a sweaty guy, but you're also a working guy. And like, how do you reconcile the two? Is it like an upscale version of like the tuxedo t-shirt? <sighs> Which you're I have. really stuck on busted <laughs> tees. <laughs> no, it's a bu- It's like a button up. Okay. It's like a... Like so a, it's not a t-shirt. It's not a t-shirt. No, it's no, like no. a nice shirt. It's a nice shirt. Yeah, for... Well, that's nice. For guys that are nicer than us, I think. <laughs> that's a nice shirt, actually. It doesn't have any buttons on it, but yeah. Oh. Is that a it's zipper? Just, oh, it's just open. This is, um, the pocket is fake. Um, this what? is, I think this is an Old Navy nice. um, attempt at look, having a nice shirt, but uh, it's not a polo shirt. It looks like a pretend nice shirt. <clears throat> but yeah, the the lapel um, pocket is, is, is fake. It's okay. sewn shut. And I have a. Uh, I've been trying to toss pens into it. The whole I have a time nice. And... I have a nice. This is a um, a jacket that I'm wearing. This is actually from what's it called? Uh, Uniqlo. Uniqlo. Yeah, they're the best. <clears throat> Uniqlo is great, except for it's. Uh, it's. I think it's from Japan. Mm-hmm. But they just got bought by Gap, I think. Uh, so everything's gonna get a little bit fatter. I think so. They're gonna get a little boxier. They get a little fatter because um, the Japanese men are a little bit slimmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which in, works for me. In the, you're very you're very slim. I'm a you're a slim guy. I'm a trim gentleman. You, 
<laughs> You're very trim. I'm a trim. Gentleman. So I can't fit into any of the pants, and it's a situation where if I uh, try on a yeah. Uniqlo pants, it's like I can't get them over my knees. Yeah. It's not like I can't get them over my waist. I'm like my knees are too fat to wear <laughs> these pants. And then you get embarrassed and you want to cry. Um, but the shirts are okay. But I cannot wear the pants. They're way too slim. Like the hips on the on 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 these guys oh, on you on me. Yeah, just like whatever the narrow. opposite of child. Bearing is what do you like a like a twenty seven waist uh, twenty six waist I wear a twenty eight waist oh boy typically. yeah Jesus so you're close <laughs> I know, and I was kidding <laughs> I know I know and you undershot it by one uh, that's hilarious um but yeah no I I am um... so for the comedy plans you do the UCB show you're in mm-hmm. the show called uh, Moose Moose yep Moose is your troop Moose is my team yeah we and how long it. have you been with the Moose and how many people are in a Herald. So there's there's eight of us. Did you um, start out in the UCB university yes, school system? The grad school, yeah. <clears throat> because that's quite a racket, uh, the school system for UCB. It's a bunch of money, Because yeah. you pay a ton of, money a ton of money to be taught how to do comedy yep. the way that they do comedy. Mm-hmm. And then you do a sh- you put together a troupe to do a show mm-hmm. that you then, well, then don't... Well, then you audition. That, and then they, then you audition. Then they do the thumbs up, thumbs down. And then they be either behead you or let you do the show, yes. and you get paid no money. I get two drink tickets. <laughs> Which is like two beers. Yeah. And then they sell a ton of tickets. Yes. To make money off of you. Yes. And then what happens? I get two drink tickets. <clears throat> I think I've already said. But then... Uh, they, they send but out like... talent scouts go to these shows and they book you in like commercials and stuff right like all these UCB yeah, people yeah, yeah. seem like they, they end up, up in TV mm-hmm. NBC shows yes Lauren Michael shows Tina yes. Fey shows they send out uh, like casting opportunities and stuff so they like keep you so you're in like an inside group yes yeah it's okay um, unfortunately I'm not like trying to be a commercial actor so it's why not <sighs> I just I'm not you're I've, thin enough I've, <laughs> yeah we've established that <laughs> That's what people want. I could have been one of those Dove guys. You're almost 30, though, so you only have about, what, two months Well, I could start transitioning into, you know, like, fun and fuckable dads. It's true. You know, I've just sort of like... Well, you need, like, a dad bod. I guess that's true. I've been perfecting my dad bod for almost 38 years. Oh, damn. Which is hard when you have no wife or child. (laughs) But I'm trying. So it's... What would that even be? Like, an aspiring dad bod. But it's aspiring dash dad bod. Yeah. Because you got the bod, but you don't have the dad. You don't have the dad. Or the son or daughter, I suppose. I don't think so. No. Um, But yeah, no, the UCB sort of like, uh, I suppose, tries to pay it forward in opportunities. Yeah, Um, it seems that way. Which is, yeah, which is fine. It's fine. Do you go to things like, what's the show? Oh, ASCAD. ASCAD. Mm -hmm. 3000? Yes, 3000. That's on Sundays. It's on Sundays. And that's a... They do two shows on Sunday. Yeah, they do like... One's a, f- a pay, one's a free. Yeah, yeah. And they get they get good folks, like people who are in town for the... Um, the monologists are usually very good. Like they get folks in town who are doing like week late night shows and, yeah. and SNL hosts and yeah. folks like that. Um, and I do you get to connect with those people because you're part of the network? Uh, you see beef? Not really. Family? I don't really go to ASCAT much anymore. I did when I first started out and I was like taking classes, but... Um, I guess I technically could probably get in for free. I can go and watch shows. You can like show a card, and you're like, <clears throat> they just like the, the folks seem to know me. I don't you have know. a badge. I don't have a badge. I they should get badges. No, they they actually they implant a chip in you, so and they know you, where you are. Yeah, at all times. as soon as you get out at the twenty third Street ACE, um, it, there's a drone that follows you. They're like, are you talking to someone at Fox? You can <laughs> talk to somebody at <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fox. Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have a f- uh, exclusive first look deal with NY1. Yeah, or just NBC, or just Lauren Michaels uh, or Broadway yeah. Video. Above Average. Above a- Rest Do in you, Peace, I think. Have you written for Above Average? I've sent them some stuff, yeah. So what's the deal with Above Average? I don't know. Because I don't know if they're still around. No, I mean, there's. St- I don't know how active they are. I so from, everybody got fired, so being, though. Was it, a, was it a place where people got paid and then got fired? I think so. I mean, yeah, they definitely had staff. Okay. Um. But I, I truly think, like, as of a week or two ago, I don't want to tell tales out of school, but the rumor on the street I heard was that everybody got their Well, slips. I mean, it, sa- it sounds like, from a weekly humorous perspective, I get to deal with a lot of writers. Yes. That come from a lot of different places. Yes. So I have above average people. I have mm-hmm. bystander people. I have McSweeney's people, New Yorker people, Mad Magazine people. Mm. 
and they all just kind of write for me, and that's great. And then it's interesting to hear where what's going on with the other publications. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, I just publish stuff, and, and it goes places yeah. or it doesn't go places, and that's fine. I get it. But um, when you hear about, like, I mean, like, Above Average is owned by Lauren Michaels. It's owned by Broadway Video. Yeah. They, have all these, they have tons it's of like videos. They have tons of yeah. stuff. So they've got money. You know, they, they've got stuff. Yeah. You know, or, like, funnier die people. Like, yeah. Like, I, we're in New York City right now, and New York City was half of funnier die mm-hmm. up until about four months ago. Mm-hmm. And then they sent out a thing, and they said, everybody has to move to Los Angeles yeah. or get fired. I remember that. I remember getting drinks when all my friends got fired <laughs> when you're dying. They just got fired. Yeah, yeah They are yeah. just like, you know what? No. Yeah. You're was, all gone. It was crazy. And there was uh, the editor-in-chief there was a guy named uh, Dan Abramson. Abramson, yeah. Do you know him? He's a good dude, yeah. I've Recently been, a dad. I've been trying to get uh, lunch or drinks with him for like two years. I think he's in L.A. now. I know. He yeah. had to move. But yeah. he used to live in Park Slope, like right by oh. me. And I reached out on Facebook, and I never heard back. Oof. And it hurt my feelings. <clears throat> but he seems like a really funny guy. He's great. He's All super All of his sweet. content was super creative, he's super so funny. funny. Yeah. And I was basically just trying to meet with him so I could steal ideas from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was a good thing he didn't Don't call mind me. the tape recorder. I know. I'm, I'm stealing this all from him, man. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know what the model is for a lot of, you know, a lot of those things where like, are they doing video or are they doing, you know, writing stuff? Cause the problem, well, it's all like, how does any of this make money? Yeah. That's the thing that you get into. You're yeah. like, you know, I'm producing content. I'm making a magazine. I'm making a video site, but how am I going to make money off of this? Do I have yeah. to sell advertising? Uh, does uh, old spice have to sell hilarious mm-hmm. uh, ads with a, a man on a horse? Or am I going to get someone to pay me right. X amount per month to look the at this subscription content? subscription model. So or I, do you make funny stuff for Old Spice? Because I exactly. think that's the big thing is the that's, Spawn Con. So that's the real – so that's what I love to do for my new sign on the wall, which is Humorous Media. And again, if you um, were here, you could see. It's a beautiful I'd, sign. I'll take a sign. I'll take a picture of it and put it on the website. But um, – I think branded entertainment mm. would be it'd be like copywriting. It'd be like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like you or like John Zeller or like those kind of guys. We get given a topic like Dove Soap and it's like, hey guys, write something funny that's not horribly racist. And <laughs> yeah. you guys are like, okay, we'll try, but no promises. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. obviously it's really hard <laughs> to come up with something that's not horribly, horribly, horribly racist. All of my ideas are comically racist. <laughs> Just like, come are on. You, are you saying I can't make somebody really, really dark and then make them really, really white? Oh, God, that gets rid of like 90% of my ideas. I don't I don't get how it relates to soap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. But, yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what... I, I, so, to get back to the original question, I did send some stuff to Above Average, but they okay. s- they switched their how they were doing pitches. Um, and I, I just, I think I stopped at a certain point. I think it's interesting. I mean, I'm lucky enough to get people to to submit to Weekly Humorous. Mm. I don't. I think just because of the, it's just because of the company. Yeah. You know, it's not because I'm great at well, anything. You also I do. know a lot of people. Like you have a lot of good connections. It's like and... it's like it's like people like you. It's, yeah. it's it's like you, and it's like uh, Bob Eckstein, and it's in in it's John Zeller, and it's Kid Lively, and it, and it's uh, all these people that have uh, um, Paul Lander, mm. who have just decided like. Well, we're gonna throw. We're gonna send stuff to Marty. Yeah, that's great. You know, let's just send, let's just send stuff to Marty, and he'll put it up. And there are so and few places too. That's yes. the big thing. So it's like, like I'm so trying to few. embrace all of you guys who are like, we need a home. Yeah, for yeah. our content. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm being a home for the content. How can I figure this out? How can I make it into a business? But it's like I'm the, uh, I'm not I'm not uh, stuck looking for talent. Like, the talent found me, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. my job is to, how do I utilize this talent that I've found, you guys, and make it into a business where we can all make money off of it? So that's like that's what I'm working on all the time. It's a noble goal. Whether it's, like, bystander people or New Yorker people, a lot of you are just like, here's some stuff, here's some stuff, here's yeah. some stuff. And it's great. Like, I'm like, great. Whatever the New Yorker doesn't take, just send it to me. Well, that's the thing. It's you know, like, like yeah. the, the, the second they reject something of yours, just Spin forward it, it to it me, yeah. and I will put it up, like, <laughs> that hour. Yeah. Done. It works for me. It's great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So for art stuff, I've seen a little bit. Yeah. You on Instagram. What's deal. your name? James Jams? James Jams. James Jams on Instagram, so go there. And you do, like, drawing stuff. Yeah. And a little bit of, like, animation-y. Yep. Yep. Is it like gift type stuff? Yeah, so I I do 
I mean, that's mostly just sort of like doodling. It's like a little outlet for me. Um, I've made a little bit of money. But you do it for cafe. It. I did, formally, yeah. Cafe is another one that switched okay. hands recently. So I'm now working for their new editor, but I formally worked for their old editor, which I and think they do two editors ago now. What kind of content are they? Are they, com- they, are they, they're they not comedy exclusive. They used to be, and now they're more, um, so they're owned by Preet Bharara's brother, Okay, and now Preet Bharara's new podcast is uh, is Cafe dot com. Okay, so they're sort of like so. I think it's all kind of like flowing from there. Well, that switched gears so hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I happen to know that the new editor, who was like a speechwriter in Washington, so he's like the new editor. I went to college with him like way back in the yeah. day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's so I, when he was like, I, I need stuff. I sent him like a bunch of like short humor stuff and he was like political. And I was like, OK, so I wrote a bunch of political stuff. And then it's just it's been a bit of a negotiation. I think they're yeah. still trying to figure out what they're about as well. Um, I mean, I mean, so the again, stuff that you sent me, I mean, <clears throat> it seems like you have a a plethora of content though that you sent like, I, like yeah. I was complaining I was like I was like Fulty you gotta send me something for me the humorous and then like that day you're like here's some stuff I, d- I just banged out <laughs> and it was like this hilarious thing about the White House uh, memo to the White House handyman yeah 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 and that was great thanks man so funny so specific um, oh yeah that was based on that uh well, they had closed it for renovation, so I right, and so I decided to riff on that. He's doing a bit of a that. he's doing a bit of a f- White House flippers. Mm-hmm. He's like, this place sucks. Yeah, I hate this <laughs> fucking place. It doesn't have nearly enough gold. Oh God. Ugh. So then I've been that to a couple truly of... was the renovation though. They put in gold curtains. That was like one of the big. Was things. it really? Yeah. I mean, it's like this. This dude is so hard to satirize because it's like anything that you think of, he does. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, he's a he's a cartoon of himself. Yeah. And he became a cartoon of himself years ago. In the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a horrible photo, and I thought it was Photoshopped, and apparently it wasn't. It was like him playing golf, and he had like uh, like shit his pants. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't think he probably sh- shat his pants. I but think he like slid down a hill or something. Yeah, no, I think he, like, it, they, they were just, exactly they were just like, like dirty, but it was like right in his butt crack of this like light, light, light khaki pants. You're just like... Oh my god! Like that's a terrible photo, and that's also a terrible photo of our president. I mean, yeah, that's it's not even that's doctored. Like, like that's real. Uh, the ghosts are still coming out, man. I don't know when it stops. I don't know. Um, so, on top of all these other things, you also um, what did I want to ask about? Oh, um, a night of humorous. Oh uh, yeah, readings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A night of humorous readings is something you do once a month, mm-hmm. every Monday at Hi Fi Bar. Hi Fi Bar, yeah. And it is a bunch of people reading hilarious things that they've written yeah. in the New Yorker or a bystander right. or whatever. Um, that's coming up uh, this Monday. This Monday, yeah. So we got a uh, we got a show coming up on Monday. Yeah, we've been doing it for. Oh my God! Our four year anniversary is in March. Wow, four years? Yeah. I've only been to like two of these. I know. And they've all it's always been in that same room. I think we like Is it getting bigger? It seems like it's I think I went it I went yeah. when it was a show that was associated with Bystander. Mm-hmm. And that was like a big show because that was like a big show. It was a big one off, yeah. And then I went to another one recently that was just about the show, but it also was like sold out. Yes. Yeah. I mean it's I, I think there's what, like no seating. There's no seating. It's a small space, which it's works in our space, favor. So nice like space. if we get, it's, I guess it's not super small. It's like medium. Yeah. But what the advantage of it is like if we get a good crowd, it feels packed and it's hot. Yeah. And if we get a small crowd, it still feels Intense. like a full room. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, uh, I think we, for the first like year and a half, it like really ebbed and flowed and we've been pretty consistent for the last like You're good at getting years. the word out. Yeah. You're and we have active. a consistent. I try to keep. I try to keep active. I try to keep active on my social media. You, uh, you do. It's, it's. I am inactive. I think it's like part of the hustle, man. I mean, it's like you, you gotta just be gotta get your name under people's noses. Um, so that when when your stuff goes out, they're like, "Where do I know this name from?" Oh, from him shouting on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn constantly. But if you're doing all of this stuff, where you actually have to show up and perform and 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 do uh, improv and like, when do you do the development part? Like, you know, when are you creative? Like, you're yeah. home. Like, do you sit down and, like, like how do you, like, what's your process to actually write an article? Um, if you're all, you know, you're so busy on all the other stuff. Yeah. 
how do you like you know you sent me something and you're like yeah just bang this out like do you sit in the morning and you're like you know what are the headlines and then you just write something pretty much yeah i mean like i'm a big news junkie so like i definitely i wake up every morning and i listen to uh like truly when i'm lying in bed i listen to the politico um playbook audio briefing Mm. which like the Politico playbook is basically just like super inside baseball DC stuff. So I listen to that. It's like a three minute podcast. And then I listen to the daily from the New York times. And as, as I'm like making my coffee, read the news, I read the headlines in the times headlines in the Washington post headlines in Politico. And then I sit down and I start writing. So it's like, Oh, you gotta like refill the well. So I like constantly go to the well, get new stuff. And I love politics. How do you make sure, and this is the problem that I think a lot of people have, at least with Twitter mm. and joke writing, is yeah. how do you not duplicate something that someone else has already thought of? Because yeah. everybody has so much information now. I know, I know. And it's how do you tweets. not copy? Yeah. The tweets, tweets are like cheap as water. Yeah. It's, it's like, how do you not copy another person's idea? Because everybody has the same idea, especially comedy people. Because we all do, we all go to the first joke, right? So you're like, oh, the first joke everybody's already done. Blah, yes. scrap that. Yeah. But I mean, the fourth, fifth, or sixth idea. It, how do you how do you not copy? I honestly, it's I tough. don't think about it really. Yeah. I mean, like especially for Twitter, does it make you not want to read other people's jokes because you don't want to copy stuff? Um, you not know really. I mean? No, I think uh, I think if I see something and I and I like something and then I go down to write and I'm like, I think I've heard this before. Mm. Then I'll be like, I for sure read it on Twitter. Yeah, but I think that like the reality of the thing is. One, nothing I'm doing is probably going to like jump to prominence enough that somebody's like, <laughs> like you know, it's no like, one's going to care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not, I'm not like, you know, I'm not going to get into like a Dane Cook, Louis C.K. kerfuffle because like nobody's going to give a shit of like, like this New Yorker piece smells very <laughs> similar to something I saw, you know, some obscure Politico on Twitter tweet. This New York shouts. Hmm. Exactly. It's like, I'll give you, I'll give you half of my pay. And like, <laughs> You'll no be happy, um, but so I don't know. I tr- I try not to, I try not to worry about it. I know that like there's more joke writers. I mean the fact that like everyone that like Jake Tapper is writing a shitload of jokes. Jake you know? Tapper, you know he's a very good cartoonist. Is he really? From CNN? Yeah, yeah. No way. I know he's published two pieces on McSweeney's. He was. We want to get um, him for our reading. Now. I feel like he was before he was a CNN guy with a. Show. I feel like he was a like a newspaper cartoonist. Interesting. I think he started out drawing, huh? And then he does drawings that sometimes show up on CNN as like part of his show. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I would know. love it if you could get him for a, um, one of your shows. I would. I mean, I'm going to go to your shows. I'm going to. I'll be at your show on Monday. Oh yeah. Um, just because I, that's going to be like my new regular thing I do. Or it's fun. What, and, it is fun. And you can pick up a ton of writers there too. I mean, yeah. like, don't feel free to. I'm not, po- you know, I'll, I'll poach. Yeah, please. I'll poach people. Be like, you we're know, not paying them, so I'll be like, you know what, the <laughs> bystander sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just it, start a bunch of beefs. Yeah, I'll just start. I like bystander, and I like I New too. Yorker, and I yeah. like above average, and I like funnier. Di- like, I'm a fan of everybody that um, is a writer. So this episode, uh, this uh, t- uh, podcast is called Talkward because you have to have an awkward story. An awkward to tell. story. Yeah, uh, a cringeworthy, horribly inappropriate, or whatever story, and you have to. Um, I'm trying to you think. Tell fun, you have to tell a fun story. I have one from when I was very little. Um, little like? Like young. Like five? Ten? I think I was, I think I was uh, yeah, four or five. Okay. Um, and so I like. This will have less booze involved, I guess. <laughs> well. Oh! <laughs> Hello. Uh, got into the still. No, um, I... <laughs> Where did you grow up? In the mountains of West I Virginia? I grew up in Westchester. <laughs> 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 this is a very ritzy still. Is your family still in New York City? Yeah. So uh, I was born in NYU Hospital. Um, actually, in the same... I was born like right next to Ronan Farrow. Uh, oh, so okay. every time... Like he's... Every time I see him like in the news, I'm always like, maybe we got switched at birth. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? I could be the one who's maybe Frank Sinatra's kid. Possibly. Um, who knows? Uh, but yeah, so I was born at NYU Hospital, born in New York. Um, and then, you know, when my sister was born, we got priced out. We moved up. Okay. We moved up to the suburbs. So you're the oldest? I'm the oldest of two. Okay. Yep. Um, and so we're in this little house. So this is the story. We're, we're right. in this little house. Um, and I'd always... Uh, 
anytime there'd be a curse word, I'd always like mimic it. That was like kind of my thing as a little guy. So like we got free tapes from an Upper West Side uh, videotape place because they were playing a movie. And what was it called? The videotape place? Yeah. I don't remember. Mine was called Errol's Video. Where was it? Maryland. Okay. Okay. I don't remember what this place was called. I mean, again, I was like two. Um, and I was in the little like baby papoose and they were showing some movie where somebody was saying shit. And I like saw people. I think my mom like flinched and I saw it. And so I started saying shit over and over and over again. <laughs> and my mom shrewdly like made it into a thing and they got free tapes from nice. the guy. So this is like in the same vein. We're in this house. I overheard there was a dog that was like pooping on our lawn a lot. Mm. And I'd heard overheard my parents talking about it. So one afternoon. I'm sitting out on the front stoop with my dad uh, and this dog comes by and I like stand up and I march down to the sidewalk with the dog and I look at the guy and I go, my dad says that if your dog shits on our lawn one more time, he's going to beat its head in with a fucking shovel. And the guy looked at me, four or five, looked at my dad and my dad goes, well, kids. And then it (laughs) never happened again. (laughs) Kids. Kids. And yeah, what are you going to do? And it worked out. These fucking kids. But it was just a thing of like, I, anytime I would like notice taboos. Yeah. And anytime someone would break one, I would pick it up. Um, and that's me. That's pretty direct. It's very direct. It's and, pretty direct. And it fixed the problem. Um, are you a, finding that you're able to, to take that kind of action now as an adult, like in New York City apartments? Like you have a leak and you're like, hey, yeah. landlord. If this leak continues. <laughs> yeah. So you're a comedy guy. I'm very proud of you, the amount of stuff that you've done. Thank you. Oh, I have a magazine coming out soon. I should I should pitch that. You have a magazine? Yeah, so... You know, I run a magazine. I know. You write for it. <laughs> what are you talking no, about? No, no, you no. You have a magazine. No, it's not a competing magazine. Uh, it's a one-off. It's whatever. more properly a book. This podcast is <laughs> over. <laughs> He's smashing all the glass. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so I did The New Yorker. Yes. Which was a parody, yes. uh, a full satire of a, an issue of The New Yorker. Yes. And the spiritual sibling. And they didn't sibling, sue you. They didn't sue us. Did they know Did I tell you? you this story? No. So we had a little launch party also at the Hi-Fi Bar, which is a great bar. You should go there if I you're will. in the Lower East Side. Um, it's hard to get there, FYI. It is. Oh, I'm just I'm talking ass. to our listeners. No, I know. It's close to the L. And it's also but close I, to the... Close to the L F. is not useful, not useful to anybody. Yes, that's true. Oh, but you can take the F, right? Ugh. Park Slope? Yes, actually, that's true. Yeah. Um, second half, maybe it's right there. So, yeah, so we did the New Yorker and we had a little launch party and a bunch of New Yorker people came and we were like, one, so flattered. It was so nice. Like a bunch of their writers, a bunch of their editors. And they were like, this is so funny. And we're like, oh, this is such a great sign. You won't sue us, huh? And they're like, oh, that's Condé Nast. We don't care, but they <laughs> maybe will care. They're like, we're not legal. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were like totally different. They were area. like, we love it. I'm sure Conde hates it. Like that was, I think, the line. <laughs> I'm that sure someone your said life about. is over. Ugh. So yeah. So when that came out, was that a print edition? No, that was only a PDF, and it yeah. looked exactly like the New York. Yes, fonts and all that kind of stuff. Did it all. Um, when did that come out? That came out last July. Can people still get it? Yeah, it's on. Just Google the New Yorker. N e u j o r k e r. And what uh, what type of jokes are in there? It's everything. I mean, so it's like we we literally took an issue, we ripped it apart, and we parodied every single thing. So there's fake ads, there's fake letters to the editor, there's fake legal copy, there's full long form essays. And who all did is this, is this you and the guys from from the reading night? Yeah, from the reading. It's night? a bunch of. It was like we all in all we had about like 40 people contribute wow. between like cartoonists illustrators do you get like writers. bob do you get do you get Eckstein? we didn't get Eckstein, but we got a bunch of other new york people to, uh actually i'm trying to remember who didn't want us to say their name but we got a bunch of great people there was a few people who were afraid they were going to get like blackballed but as it turned yeah. out um the new yorker people liked it it seemed like in the past couple of months mm. there's a new regime at the new yorker for humor there is yeah so well, for cartoons so what's is. his name left i'm sorry to say what's his name mankoff bob bob mankoff Big left. Old bob mankoff yeah and he went over and jumped ship went to the esquire esquire yeah um and esquire is supposedly going to be doing a humor section similar to the new yorker Yet though i have not it. seen it yeah. and um also cartoons Yet to see it. so the new people at the new yorker are letting in a lot of our people yeah it seems like yeah i think it's i think that's like a younger group a younger group, and it's it's um 
uh, it's Emma Allen and she's great. Okay. And she's explicitly trying to get more uh like younger people, more women, more people of color. So like and you can actually see it. Like it's yeah. it's cool. Um, oh yeah. Um I've definitely seen a bunch of cartoons um who I've worked with yeah. who are now getting accepted like a lot. Oh yeah. Um, Because I think it was pretty calcified under Mankoff. Because he's been there since what, seventeen forty three? Yeah, about that. Yeah, about the. It was very like Columbus era. Yes. Yeah. How many eighteen twelve jokes can you get? I don't know. Uh, And I love a good War of eighteen twelve joke. White House got burned down. Canada, the Canadians sacked DC. There's nothing (laughs) funnier than that. but yeah, so uh, we did that that whole issue. So it's it's literally everything. So and there's, a lot of people bought it. it we we gave it away for free. Um, a lot of people downloaded it. A lot it? of people downloaded it. It got a ton of great press. That's good. Um, and so we immediately started working on the second project, which is literally being printed as we speak um, somewhere in the Midwest, and then will be mailed to us. And it's called Paul Ryan the Magazine, and it's a two hundred page lifestyle magazine about and for Paul Ryan. So we have a lot of the same writers um, who are very well pedigreed, a lot of the cool. same illustrators. Um, and yeah, it's going to be... And how many issues are you going to have It's printed? just a one-off. Oh, my God. It's, so it's taken one us print? A, it's taken us a year. Yeah, so I'm not doing this again. <laughs> and hopefully Paul Ryan will be out of office by the time we'd have another one hopefully. ready. So it's not, it's not a true magazine. It's, it's a book, but okay. we're, we're styling it. How many pages parody, is it? 192. That's a lot. It's a fucking lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's been a bear. Um, but we have a we have a beautiful cover of a full um, a pen and ink reclining nude of Paul Ryan. Who did that? Kevin Alvier, who's a great nice. great illustrator. Um, it's so beautiful, um, and we have like tons of really fun, tons of really fun stuff. So that's going to be in print soon, and you can order it on Wisco, as in Wisconsin Hunk dot com. W i s c o h u n k. Wisco Hunk. Yeah, dot com, as in the hunk from Wisconsin. Paul All right, Ryan. I'll link to it. Um, so where can people find you on the Instagram and the Twitter and all of that stuff? You're very active and on the social media. Trying to, trying to, trying to get on the hustle. Uh, on Twitter, I am at James Folta, F O L T A. Verified, verified. I know. I don't know how. That, I don't know how I slipped in under there. I don't know either. I also don't think that it gets you anything. It gets you some credibility. It gets you a little credibility, yeah. but with who? I don't know. Other, yeah. other writers were trying so. to get verified. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the that's only, that's the only people I've that got. care. Uh, it's it's bitterness. just yeah, it's bitterness. Yeah, it's, it's just, just people that got rejected. But it's it's truly every single. <laughs> that's every single thing that I've ever done. I mean, it's like that's that's the coin of the realm. Yeah. in comedy is bitterness. Yeah. So oh, yeah, Twitter. It's always like, oh, I didn't. Oh, I thought of that first, but I didn't right. do it. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Should have been me. Fuck Somebody that. took Fuck my slot. Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I should have hosted the late night show. Yeah. So James Folta. James Folta. James Folta. James Jams on Instagram. James Jams on Instagram. Um, and your then, UCB show. You're uh, part of the Herald team, Moose. Mm-hmm. We're and up most Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Yeah. And then every first Monday of the month at High Five Bar. Yes. It is a night of humorous a night readings, of humorous readings yeah. and that is there a website for that? Uh, yes, it is eveningofhumorousreadings.tumblr.com. That's not long That's at all. It's not long at all. What you what you should do is just go to jamesfolta.com and it's all there. And the website is short; you don't even have to scroll, and you can get all the links <laughs> that you need. And there's a picture of me as a little kid. It's uh, fun as hell. Well, this is great. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me, this man. Is super fun, James. Um, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Please support the, the Weekly Humorous. Well, this is Talkward. I'm Marty Dundix, editor in chief of Weekly Humorous magazine. Follow us at Weekly Humorous. Follow me at Marty Dundix. Make sure you sign up for our e newsletter at weeklyhumorous.com. This podcast is distributed by Humorist Media, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, James Folta. Thank you. All right. <laughs>